The Mighty Quest turned into the Turbo Quest for epic dodges. Gigantic is about to light it up in Amsterdam. Warface is about to have players do some mountain climbing. And Skyforge shows off its brutal side with the Berserker. What's happening guys? James Blonde here with MMOS.com with a quick weekly recap for MMO news and announcements for the week ending December 1st, 2014. There wasn't a whole lot of news after the North American holidays this past week, but starting out our update is news about the release of Aftermath, a new update to Defiance following the end of Season 2 for the TV series. The Aftermath update picks up where Season 2 left off as massive grid inquisitors and Votanus assassins threaten life on the new frontier, the pilgrims of the Gilding Light prepare to throw the entire world into chaos. So in other words, this new update introduces new enemies, new missions, and story maps, a continuation of the story left off by the show, and a couple of new in-game system mechanics like the Salvage Matrix action, reduce rating, that brings the rating of an item down to match your current ego rating. Like always, the new update is free to download and play for everyone. Next up, Digital Extremes introduces a new female frame to Warframe, known as Mesa the Gunslinger. As an expert marksman, Mesa is a blend of crowd control and punishing gunplay. With ballistic battery, she's able to store up damage she takes in and then releases it back into the enemy with a single gunshot. Shooting gallery allows her to increase her allies' damage output temporarily while at the same time jamming the enemy's weapons at random. Her shatter shield reflects incoming enemy fire back at a random enemy and Peacemaker unleashes Mesa's custom slinger pistols and at that point all hell breaks loose. Kind of reminds me of the combination of Athena and Nisha from the new Borderlands of Pre-Sequel, which is perfectly awesome in my opinion. Along with Mesa, this patch introduces a new infestation event, new weapons including a new Arcwing weapon, new customizations, and even a brand new boss. Plenty to look forward to next time you hop onto Warframe, that's for sure. Also last week, Warface teased at a new Siberian setting coming to the game rather soon. The stunning new co-op setting, Operation Cold Peak, will push even experienced players to their limits as they target a secluded stronghold located high in the frigid mountains of Siberia, and along the way they'll have to brave the elements as well as enemy fire, and stay on track when blizzards suddenly strike to manipulate the gameplay. Adding to that challenge, there are three new maps that make up the setting, powerful new bosses to face, and an environment that makes team-based actions extra crucial. This is going to be the first of many frequent content updates honoring Crytek's commitment to delivering regular fresh content to its players, so look forward to more in the future. Good news for Europeans looking to try out Gigantic. The Western Europeans seem to have cried the loudest for access to the Alpha, and that's just what Motiga has offered them. The new video you see playing here announces the Alpha coming to Europe on December 17th, with the first server being set up in Amsterdam which is the area with the most followers of the game, according to their forums. Plus, it's planning to launch with the latest alpha build that we haven't even seen yet. Of course, you'll still have to sign up at their website to hopefully gain access, but at least you're that much closer to trying it out. More news came in last week regarding Echo of Soul from Area Games. According to the official press release, Echo of Soul has been a big hit in Asian markets since the game's release last year, and Area Games is prepping to release the game's massive world and unique soul collecting system to North America and European players. More information about the official release date in 2015 is headed our way soon, but some of the accolades for the game have pointed out the variety of ways there are for players to level up excellent skill effects, along with the game's dedicated mobile app that supports in-game chat and item transfers between players. I'm personally not sure that this game is going to be groundbreaking by all means, but it should offer up some interesting gameplay based on some of the features we've heard about so far. I don't know, we'll have to see. And when one MMORPG rises, another one may have to come down. In this case, GBE Games has decided to shut down Hero of the Obelisk as of November 30th. The original announcement for this game's closure was made on October 30th, and the publisher indicated that the obelisk will return under a new name in the future, as it is undergoing a major redevelopment. For that, an exact date has not been indicated, but GBE Games promises to update its existing community when the game is ready again for public release. And with that, we wish them luck. And speaking of redevelopment, the mighty quest for epic loot recently made a preview for a new turbo attack mode. Or in other words, a redesign of the movement and combat in castles. This offers up considerably faster movement speed with a change in controls allowing you to constantly move around, only to stop with the shift key. Plus now when you start moving from a stop position you'll gain a short boost of movement speed designed to help dodge attacks. 
They've also removed all the skill cooldowns and they only rely on mana now, which is regained over time or of course by attacking creatures, which is considerably faster in itself. These changes were made to help players counter seemingly impossible castles, make it a lot easier to dodge attacks and speed up the movement altogether, from walking to running basically. The new mode is in beta, but so far the community doesn't seem to be too fond of the changes. In fact, it seems like they really want Ubisoft to address different problems altogether. And speaking of movement mechanics, the latest update to EverQuest Next Landmark offers flying. Okay, so you can't just fly around and farm resources, of course, but you are able to fly on your own claim or any claim that you have permission with by crafting a Builder's Bobble of Flight. I was really hoping they would add this into the game sooner or later. It'll make it so much easier to create elaborate structures in the game. It's kind of like creative mode in Minecraft now, which a lot of people, including myself, will appreciate. Also, in the most recent patch, you can now armor up for your battles with new accessories and gear, giving you some fairly useful stats. Cool update for Landmark, I must say. More news this week from My.com. Starting with World of Speed, we see an iconic race between two iconic cars, the Ford Mustang GT and the Chevy Camaro SS. In the latest video, you see here these two modern muscle cars battle it out on the streets of San Francisco and the California Highway, which is fairly appropriate considering the cars. Now to be honest, it seems like they've waited a long time to show off these two rival cars, so my guess is that they've saved these two for last, and that means we've come to beta time. Or at least I hope that's what it means. In more My.com news, Obsidian Entertainment revealed the Ruthless Berserker class in Skyforge this past week, and this guy is absolutely brutal, which you can easily see from the new trailer playing here. Wielding a two-handed, wait for it, chain sword, the Berserker is a fearless warrior that rushes headlong into the battle, carving down several enemies at a time like a turkey on Thanksgiving. This guy channels rage from combat to power abilities that allow him to jump massive distances to bring the fight to his opponents. And once there, he has the ability to slow, stun, and knock back enemies to control the flow of battle. In Skyforge at least, the Berserker is a terrifying presence on the battlefield and is the class of choice for players that enjoy up close and personal carnage. I'm looking forward to it. Next up comes a new gameplay trailer for Dofus and Wakfu, introducing the new Eliotrope class that uses teleportation portals for both mobility and attacks. Available on the beta server, the Eliotrope class are tricky. They move at the speed of lightning, disappear in a blink of an eye. However, you've got to be weary in that your enemies don't figure out how to use your portals against you. A recent trailer put out by the devs shows that the new class brings together the past Dofus with the present Wakfu. Those of you who know the Wakfu animated series will have recognized Yugo, the Eliotrope hero. It's a pretty cool course of action to be honest with both games, and for Dofus anyway, you should see the new class on the public servers on December 9th. And for our last bit of news this week, we see a new trailer for Bless, this time showing off the actual combat system that we've been wondering about. Now keep in mind guys, this is still the Korean version of the game, but the combat looks pretty enticing. Definitely action based and perhaps soft targeting, but at least fast paced and reactive. Seemingly along the lines of Terra or Neverwinter, anyway. Either way, the trailer does great showing off the gameplay, and I'm still very excited to see more. But anyway, guys, that's about all the major MMO news and announcements for this short week of news. Like always, if you're looking for more information about the topics featured in the recap, check the links in the description below. Otherwise, head over to MMOHuts.com news for even more MMO news. Feel free to discuss the news in the comments below, or head over to MMOHuts.com forums. And until next time, guys, that's going to be it for me. I'm James Blonde. See you out there, gamers.